Welcome, this is Jason Seekers. Now what we're gonna do in today's tutorial is we are gonna be going through live paint and we're gonna go through a little bit of the questions. So this actually came in the comments section. So if you guys are out coming through and if you have any illustrator questions, definitely put that into the comments section so I can kind of see what you're struggling with and then I can also gear new content to make sure that those questions are being answered uh, in all of the new stuff that's kind of rolling out here. So what we want to be doing here is I want to go through a couple of different things. So the first question was when I come into live paint and I go specifically under object and if I drop down where it says live paint that that make I'm not able to actually click on it or and what could be some of the issues right away. So the easiest one is this if I go control A and if I'm just selecting everything I'm actually letting Illustrator know ahead of time what I'm about to do or what the process is going to be applied to. So just kind of always let Illustrator know, hey, this is what we're about to do, or this is the object that I'm, I'm looking to do any effect to or any of the tools to, and it'll kind of let things, the, the program know ahead of time. And so it does, it is finicky that way. So just be aware that it's a little bit different than let's say uh, Adobe Photoshop, where I can just come over and not have anything selected just click on live paint and then just dump. So it's a little bit of a different process where I do have to say here, here's all the stuff that is selected. If I drop down to live paint, now I can make it. And then I can come back through with my live paint bucket. Here's my live paint bucket, shortcut is K. And then I would be able to just come in and then point and click. So for those of you that are kind of jumping on new, live paint bucket is pretty much what we do on almost every one of the tutorials and it's just pointing and clicking. So it is very, very easy. It is very user friendly. We almost do that on every single one just because I have to point and click and then that's how easy it is. So that's kind of version number one. I'm just going to do undo some of this. So that was kind of the major question on that first one is how do I get to the make? My first response is going to be that more than likely nothing was selected. Now I am going to be coloring. So notice that on this one, I'm coloring on the expanded and edited kind of line the, the version of that. Now, if you are coming in and saying, well, what if, and let me, I'm just seeing if we can get some oops. So let's see if this one is the live version. So if I have a live version of lines, this is kind of moving into another thing. And this is just troubleshooting with our kind of live paint is if I come over and if I just say, hey, I wanna do live paint and I wanna do it on this layer, you would never do it, so I don't know if, I'm just kind of finding a live one with all of the brushes. Notice all this dumb overlapping, like you would never color with that. So just be aware that, especially with the brushes. So you would, <laughs> you would not do that. But what I wanna point out is if I just drop down to live paint, and if I just jump over to make, so if I'm trying to color on a version that has live paint brushes or all of our brushes on it, just notice that it's gonna give me this little pop-up that says, hey, complex visual appearance, maybe lost when converting, more specifically brushes. So if I click on it, just notice that all of my brushes disappeared. So it just went back to a basic kind of a stroke. So obviously that would not be something that would you would be looking to do. So I'm gonna keep that layer where it's at. I'm just gonna lock that out. And then I'm actually gonna answer another little question. And that was gonna be, well, Jason, what if we don't do cartoons and we don't have all of the brushes? can we still do live paint bucket? Well, the answer is yes. So this one is just off of kind of the brushes. So I actually duplicated out the one below. So this was just one that we did with our pencil. We built it out. And so I just removed any of the, the, the stroke to it. So this is just no stroke whatsoever. Can I still do live paint? Well, of course you can. So just be aware that if I'm in here, notice that it's already recognizing it. So notice that I have my live paint bucket selected so here's live paint bucket so as soon as i hover it's already kind of recognizing things because it is selected and instead of me doing the longhand version it's basically saying hey we're about to make this a live paint group so this is basically the same thing as if i went up to the top live paint make now if i click on it all of that just kind of fills right on in and whatever the live paint is doing it's reading the path so it has nothing to do with brushes it has nothing to do with anything else. It's just looking at one of those edges and it's looking for enclosed spaces to fill. So if I just come back over and grab some of my greens, same thing, I can just start filling stuff in. I'm just pointing and clicking. 
Notice all this little overlapping. I'm gonna to touch base on that in a second. And then I can just start filling those in. And then we are able to still use it. So a couple different things as we are, uh, as I'm just filling this in, and this is just gonna be full circle. And hopefully for those of you that have been hanging out with me for a long time is we can, whenever we're doing our live paint, and if I just kind of go up to the top, you might be able to tell that we have a silly amount of overlapping taking place. So we are usually doing a couple different things. We're doing a little bit more on the efficiency model. I want to make sure that you're kind of going a little bit long. We can start going a little bit faster as soon as we do that. And then more importantly, you might be able to tell that we are filling in our gaps. So all I have to do is if I went a little bit long, I can change absolutely nothing. I don't have to do anything differently. I'm just pointing and clicking but you can kind of see that we have already done all of the gap options. So notice that these guys, they're nice and long. I don't have to worry about them. And so if I ever want to change things or if I just want to kind of color it in a different way and or if I want some more options, maybe some more a little wiggle room, I can just color that layer and then I can sit there and still color it out. So it's going to read the path. It's looking for enclosed spaces and then you're still able to, to use it if there's a stroke, if there's brushes or any of the above. Now I will point this out just in case you are saying, well, what about gap options? I'm usually in the kind of the camp of doing it manually. So I would much rather kind of do my own. So let's just use this little cheek for the example is notice that we've got these nice little curves. I will usually say I'd rather build that in as I'm drawing rather than doing something with, let's say the gap detection. And most of the tutorials, we try our best to come up to live paint and do the make. And the reasons for that is I want you to be able to see that the gap options is just hanging out right there. So if I just click on gap options, hey, do you want to do gap detection? Do I want to change those to medium, large, custom? You can do that at any point. So if you just say, hey, I want to do large and if I want to preview. And now if you have the preview on or off, it'll actually start filling those in. You can actually kind of see how that is playing out. If you're not too concerned about gap options, you can almost just turn that off and then you don't have to worry about it. But I will usually say gap options is there. Now, if we do a little gap option, let's do gap options 101. Let me just find a nice little thing. So if I just grab my pen tool and I'm just grabbing my pencil. So if I just do a nice little C and let's just fill this in with any color, there's my gap option. So notice that a gap option, all that is going to do is it's going to fill a straight line from one to the other. So that is what officially a gap option it is. So reasons why you might hear me say why I would do it manually is this is just, this is not necessarily what I might want everywhere. So most of the time, if not 100% of the time, I don't ever want it to be a straight line from point A to point B. That's completely random. It probably is not going to be the one that I want. So I, and I'll even be more on, I'll be more frank. It is <laughs> literally never the way you want it to do it. So if you just build it into your draw step, then you don't have to really worry about it. But this is what a gap detection is, right? So I'm, that little straight line from one point to another, that's what that gap detection is doing. But it's a little bit easier if you just plan in into your draw step uh, as you're doing it anyway. So with that said, what I want you to do is if you have any questions or if you want me to clarify some things, you're more than welcome to put those into the comment section. I always read those. It makes the, the channel very, very exciting. And that's usually my favorite part. Uh, the second little thing is thanks for hanging out. I always appreciate it.